Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and I'm here with week number three of the thank you journal that I'm making. And I'm using some watercolor paper that I have taped down, and I'm adding water to it with this aqua brush. And an aqua brush, you can actually squeeze the brush itself and drip water onto the paper. You can get the water onto the paper any way you want, but I'm making vertical stripes with dry spaces in between because I want to do something that has sort of drippy looking striations. You can also do something similar to this by taping your paper to a board and then tipping the boards. So you get lots of gravity going on, but this is done for the class that I'm doing at my church, the Bible study. And there's a lot of people who don't really have all the tools and supplies and place to work and everything. So I came up with ways to keep this really simple for them. So just painting some stripes and then dropping watercolor into them. I tend to choose kind of analogous colors when I do all these different kinds of backgrounds because I don't want the background to be the important thing. The journaling is going to be the important part. I just want something interesting on the page to surround it. And for me also just the process of painting, putting color onto the paper, watching it move and that sort of thing is a very meditative part of my creative process. So I'm just kind of tossing colors in, letting the paint move around, dropping water into it, trying to squeeze this brush and force some more water out, that sort of thing, splattering stuff, just having all kinds of fun. For this particular technique, I just want to make sure I leave enough open areas that I'm going to have place to journal. So once it was all completely dry, then I was able to go in with my Sharpie and start creating shapes. And what I'm doing is tracing around the edges of the different shapes that the watercolor made. And that's kind of the cool part about doing this after having painted something so that you don't have to think about how do I make a shape? What shape do I make next? Do I make a circle? Do I make a square? Is it looking too rigid? Is it whatever? This makes it very organic because you're just following the shapes that are already there. And once you trace the main shapes, if you look within those, you'll see little tiny halos of shapes inside of them and it's going to give you more areas to break things down into and that sort of thing. The verse that I'm using for my meditation during this little page is Psalms 139 verse 14, which is my life verse, my very favorite verse in all of scripture. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And what I have really been pondering is that God has made me perfectly the way I'm supposed to be made. And I know we say that a lot, but there are so many times when I find myself thinking, boy, I wish I were as blank as someone else. I wish I were as pretty as her. I wish I were as uh, fit as so-and-so. I wish I were as smart as so-and-so. I wish I had a ministry like that person. That looks really effective. And I, I just find that weird jealousy monster rears its ugly head in very subtle ways. It's stuff that kind of bounces around inside my head as opposed to being an outward direct thought. And God doesn't want us to be thinking that way and trying to check myself and remember constantly that God made me the way he made me for a reason. So what I've written in my journal is thank you God for making me as you saw fit. I know I don't appreciate it, though you have done all, all you have done, and I can't even read my writing, <laughs> to create me to be a unique individual. You gave me the mind of both an artist and a businesswoman, left and right brain together. You've given me compassion for the most vulnerable. That is not as common as I used to think it was. While it may get me in trouble sometimes, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You made me a dog and a cat person, egalitarian. <laughs> you made me funny, with a deep appreciation for dad jokes. Most of all, you gave me a heart for you and your word, which will never leave me out in the cold. And then since I had a column of space over on the right-hand side, I also wrote the scripture out. When you're doing a journal like this, you can fill the whole thing with prayerful journaling. You can write scripture in there. You can just keep doodling to fill in those spaces. You can leave some restful spaces as well. You don't have to fill in every square inch of this. The whole idea of having a journal 
and creating a journal is to process what God is talking to you about. For me, writing out what I'm thinking often shows me even errors in my thinking when I see it in black and white on a piece of paper. It can sometimes throw me for a loop because I'm like, wow, I didn't know I thought that. Didn't know I bought into that thing. And other times it just serves as a reminder. As I'm writing it out, it makes it more factual in my my thinking because my hand has to go from looking at the scripture to copying it over into the journal or it has to kind of jive with my brain and I have to put all that together into a sentence and that tends to cement things more. That's one of the things I liked about Bible journaling is that it takes all of this stuff that I'm learning and that I'm growing in and allows it to kind of come together in a creative way that speaks to my memory of the truth so much more than just kind of thinking about it and moving on from it. Even writing in a journal where I'm not doing any artwork doesn't have the quite the power that something having to do with something creative will do for me. So even just being able to doodle and ponder things while I'm doodling is just really nice. And this kind of doodling is loose and freeing and fun. All right, I will see you again next week with the next lesson. Thank you so much for joining me. Share this with your friends if you think there's anybody who could use lessons like this. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.